Bună ziua! You know, some things in Romania just get better every year. I'm getting black currants. I'm getting lime. I'm getting wet dog. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting chorba de burta. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting really carried away with this fantastic Romanian wine. And you know this bottle of wine that I brought with me today. This is a representative bottle of wine. This wine represents what's going on in the wine industry in Romania at the moment. It's about the, the renewal of fantastic Romanian grape varieties. I mean, this is a Fetiasca Niagara. Doesn't it sound delicious? Yeah, almost as delicious as Crampoșia Selecționata. And it's a wine which is about making a bid for quality. It's about a wine that is making a new offer, or I should say it's a renewed offer of tastes on the European wine market. This wine has absolutely nothing to do with the cheap and cheerful £1.99 a bottle wines that I bought as a student from the Socialist Republic of Romania. These days, the vines of the Prahova Valley have roots which dig down much deeper to a great tradition in Romania, an interwar tradition of fantastic winemaking. And I'm glad to say that this wine has been revived, has been brought back to life thanks to years of British investment and British know-how. Now, I'm told that there's also been some French investments on the Romanian wine market, and um, apparently those wines are not bad. <laughs> But my point is this. Romanian wines are back. They are of real quality. And they're not just copying the, the vines and, and the vintages of Italy or Spain or France. They are offering something new, something uniquely Romanian, to the European wine market. Now, there's the metaphor. Now we're going to try and stretch it. As you heard, I've been toiling in the vineyards of Central and Eastern Europe for most of the last 20 years. I've been privileged to assist in a process of transition from a communist system to uh, new forms of capitalism, market economies, democracy. And uh, as a wine grower will tell you, this process is one in which the outcomes are not certain. You have to take the vine, you have to nurture it, you have to give it the conditions in which it's going to be successful. For democracy su to succeed, you need economic reforms, you need the rule of law, You need to change and modernize political parties. And that's about choices. It's the choices that countries make. Their leaders and their citizens. Different choices produce different outcomes, from Poland to Russia, from Romania to Albania. But there are choices to be made. And that process of transition doesn't stop when you get to the European Union, when you become a member of the European Union. Rather, the challenges become different. The challenge is about how to make your country, your economy, competitive against others inside the single market. 
It's about how you maximize the benefits of being a member of the European Union. It's about how you play a role in shaping the European Union in the future in such a way that's to the benefit of your country and your people. Now, the, the EU has a policy on this, and the policy is called cohesion. And the idea is that countries like Romania and Bulgaria and the other new member states, having adopted the acquis communautaire, the rules of the club, then just need to catch up with the rest of Europe. Well, I think that there are some flaws in that policy. And my message to you is not to play catch up, because the goal here is not cohesion. What's important is to be competitive. Now, there are areas where, where cohesion is very important. It is, of course, important that Romania has the railways and the motorways and the, the waterways that will connect Romania with the rest of the European Union. That's very important. But in other ways, it's really important not to be the same, but to be different from your competitors inside the single market. And that is about making choices. You have the possibility to select out the bad paths of development and to select in those that are good and most appropriate to Romania's circumstances. I believe that there is a band of countries in Europe that stretches from the Baltic to the Balkans, which will become a future engine of growth in the European Union. These are the countries that are not weighed down by very high levels of, of public debt and consumer debt. These are countries that are not tied down by lots of regulations that make it very difficult for businesses to adapt and to change. These are countries that are not pinned down to social security commitments and to pension commitments that we know are only going to disappoint our elderly and bankrupt our youth. Instead, these are the countries which in the last two decades have shown an incredible capacity for change, a remarkable resilience. They've shown that they have populations that are full of talent, some of the most skilled people on the continent. You know, they just produced a, um, a survey last week which showed that the, the Estonians have the third best level of English in the European Union. Presumably that's after the UK and Ireland, but I'm not sure of that. And as this wine shows, when you can combine those kind of qualities and skills with foreign investment, with British know-how in this case, you can get some incredible results in terms of productivity and quality. I've just got to have another sip of this, actually. Hang on a second. <laughs> the other point, of course, is that the single market is changing. The single market of the future is a digital single market. And in a digital single market, countries like Romania have fantastic advantages. This is a country that has the fastest internet speeds in Europe. This is a country that has uh, 60,000 IT engineers and some of the best hackers in the world. This is a country which is becoming the website factory of Europe. I was in Yash yesterday, and in cities like Yash, as well as in Cluj and in Timisoara and here in Bucharest, they are building the websites for banks in the city of London, for football clubs in the Premier League. The digital single market is being constructed here today in Romania. And that is something for Romania to use, uh, not to surrender. These are the advantages. Let me just give um, uh, a couple of examples as to why it's so important now that Romania does not simply follow the uh, social, economic, environmental models 
that have been shown to be unsustainable in other parts of Europe. I want to give a couple of examples of why it's so important that Romania does not put its new wine into old wineskins. We're talking about wine, so let's talk about agriculture. Now, I'm, the Romanian government is very keen to have uh, higher levels of direct payments from Brussels in the agricultural sector. And I can understand that you know, clearly there's a problem when farmers in France are getting direct payments that are two or three times higher or more than farmers in Romania. But we all know that you don't build a sustainable agricultural sector and food industry based on subsidies from Brussels. And if Romania at this moment can build an agricultural sector and a food industry that is profitable, successful, without being highly dependent on direct payments from Brussels, then how much more competitive is Romania going to be in the future when those subsidies decline, as inevitably they must? Or let's take public health. Can anybody here in the audience tell me which country in the EU has the highest levels of obesity? Sorry? The UK. Now, you probably wouldn't have guessed that looking at the British ambassador. <laughs> but I'm sorry to say that it is true. The UK has the highest levels of obesity in the EU. And which country has the lowest levels of obesity? Romania. You probably would have guessed that looking at the British ambassador to Romania. <laughs> and I call this difference the fat gap. Now, why is the fat gap important? It's very easy to explain. The food that you can get from Romania's villages and from the Romanian countryside is wholesome, tasty, tasty, organic food. Not the cheap and tasteless and mass-produced food that is dominating the supermarket shelves in so much of, of other parts of Europe. I believe that the economies of Central and Eastern Europe can be fitter and healthier and more competitive of course, it's important what choices you make. And everybody has got the choice to make. You can decide if you want to eat tonight in McDonald's or somewhere else. But you think through what the consequences of those choices are. Obesity is a huge problem today in the UK. Diabetes is becoming of epidemic proportions. We estimate that the cost to our public health system will reach £45 billion by 2050. That is twice the entire health spending of Romania today. So a lot depends on these choices. And this is an important moment where Romania can decide if it wants to play catch up or can make the choices that will make it competitive for the future. Now, if that new wine is to flow, then it's important that you address some of the some of the bottlenecks that prevent Romania from being as competitive as it should be. Those are familiar issues. You see them in, in for example, in the, the World Economic Forum's Competitiveness Index. It's about um, having an effective justice system. It's about reforming the state-owned companies in Romania so that they can become a driver of growth and not a drag on growth. Um, it's about uh, having a proper system of public procurement, cracking the issues of absorption of EU funds. These are all important issues if the potential of the Romanian economy is to be realised. I had a um, British businessman who came to Bucharest last month. It was his first visit to Romania. And after a couple of days here, he said to me, you know, this country is a paradox. On the one hand, you have incredibly talented, dynamic, entrepreneurial people. On the other hand, they are constrained by incredible inefficiencies, especially in the state sector. Well, my answer is that it is time to take out the cork and to let that new wine flow. 
And I want to finish with some words of a great poet. Ce ți doresc eu ție? Dulce România. Țara, țara mea de glorie, țara mea de dor, brațele nervoase, armă de târie, la trecutul ți mare, mare vitor. Fiarbe vin în, în cupe, spumege pocalul, dacă fiți mândri, Asta le nutresc, căci rămână stâncă, deși moare valul, dulce România, asta ți-o doresc. Mulțumesc! Thank you. Thank you.